Hello and welcome to this latest edition of the Virtual Preach Sessions. And today I'm joined by Jill for all the way from sunny Aberdeen. Yay! <laughs> and it is sunny. You were saying that, Jill. You were, you were saying that. Yeah, it's good. There we go. Um, <laughs> and so I'm, I'm interested. You're going to give us a presentation on, on the hybrid nature of the library experience up in Aberdeen at Nesco. So without further ado, Jill, over to you. Thank you so much, Kenji and Jason, for having me. I would just like to first of all say, um, well, two things. I don't feel that what I'm sharing is revolutionary. OK, I'm just going to put that out there right now. However, it might give some people maybe one or two ideas. So that's really the most important thing. The second thing I'm going to say is I've done that thing I hate, which is put all the information and everything I'm going to say on the slides. I normally don't do that. I normally speak to a random bunch of pictures. But I think for this one, if we're sharing the slides, um, you might as well actually get the information. So I, I've, I've done that thing. So rather than just like pictures of like maybe, um, well, I can't even think of an example, but, you know, something random and abstract, I actually just have all the information on the slide. So I do apologise for that. But I do have a very nice corporate NESCO um, presentation. So NESCO is our North East Scotland College um, acronym. I think, hope that's the right word. And hopefully, there we go. So um, I was asked to come along and speak today, and I thought about thinking sort of more if this is a sort of a, it's actually a, a reflection really um for me and reflecting on the library team I started as I always like to caveat I'm very new I started at Nesco in December 19 so I did a couple of months and then it was COVID and um, where we were doing the fully online library service and now we are I'm going to use it uh, working in the new normal um which and hybrid seems to be the, the, the sort of term that we're, we're um, matching up with the new normal. So I'm going to speak to that today. Um, I'm Jill, as I say, Information Services Manager at North East Scotland College. So I just wanted to do a bit of scene setting to begin with. So where we are right now. So at the moment, we're looking at if we've got 50% of normal numbers on two of our campuses. So our Alton's campus um, and our Fraserburgh campus. At the moment, we're looking at about 37% of um, normal numbers being on campus in Aberdeen City. And blended learning accounts for the rest of the percentages. Now, how much of that is online and how much of that is in campus differs per course. But just to give you a kind of overview of where we are, you know, we're absolutely, you know, um, nowhere near being back as normal. The campuses are still very quiet. And this is sort of where we're operating at. In terms of our hybrid library service, our three campus libraries are open as normal. Um, the, really, the only caveats we've got are there's some seats still crossed off, depending on the campus. We don't bum, don't let kind of six people go down and look at the books. There's limited numbers in, in the rows. I am incredibly, incredibly blessed by the best frontline library team in the land. Uh, and, and certainly that, that, well, don't tell any of my ex-colleagues, but anybody that I've worked with in the last 20 years, um, they are fantastic. They hated working from home, they hated furlough, and they were desperate to come back. There was not one of them that intimated any worry or concern about coming back and working on campus on the front line. I am so, so blessed. Um, therefore, our all our frontline library staff are working on campus. Um, we've got two full-time librarians, myself and Christine. We are doing the hybrid model. So we are some days on campus, some days at home. I'm at home. And uh, our two part-time librarians, it was their choice and they also wanted to work on campus. Um, I, I can't even repeat it again. I'm just so lucky. So whilst we had a very normal a uh, library service we do also have an element of um, the hybrid because we are still working at home and when we go on to speaking about supporting um learning um i think it's important to well we'll, we'll go on to that and discuss about literally how much online stuff we're still doing please ask me any questions as we go by the way um, i'm quite happy to be interrupted if that's okay kenji and jason so just just interrupt me I, when I was kind of thinking about this, and as I say, it really was a, a sort of self-reflection. Well, how are, how is the hybrid? Well, what is the hybrid teaching and learning? What is the hybrid library service, and how are we supporting both? So I broke it down to be supporting hybrid teaching, how to support hybrid learning, and then how to support well-being. 
and I think that's really important to give that kind of whole picture. In terms of supporting hybrid teaching, um, I've, I've broken it down and looking at stock, we are operating a kind of e-first policy, which I'm sure most people are doing. Now, we're not we're not, not buying physical books, but we're checking online first. You know, I did a search for the class this morning. We have 23 physical books on mental health. We have 1,200 e-books on mental health. So that gives an example of kind of where we are. Were we there before COVID? We were. We were. Um, it's just that I would suggest, what do I know? I was only there a couple of months, but we were. Um, but um, we are really, e-first is that kind of first first option now. And of course, I'm, I'm kind of speaking the, you know, the much more knowledgeable than me people here in terms of price and license um, issues. I got some great bargains yesterday, some e-books for £8.19. Happy as Larry with that. Then you look at something else somebody wants and it's 500 quid for a one user license. I mean, I always say that in my, I did 18 year, years in school and public libraries, and I spent those 18 years saying yes to everything. Every single thing. When you're a, especially a public librarian, when you work in public libraries, the answer is always yes. Always. <laughs> and I have now turned into a no librarian because sometimes you have to say no. And the reason you have to say no is I'm not paying £500 for a one user licence. And it has actually taken me a long time to get to grips with the fact that I do have to say no. And as well, when things actually don't exist, you actually can't say no. Um, yeah, Joyce saying licensing is so restrictive and ridiculous. It really is. It's such a challenge. Um, and it, it has turned me into a no librarian. But of course, we do say yes when we can. We're also looking at new, not just ebooks and e-textbooks, but we're actually looking at new online resources. We've got a fantastic range of databases and online resources for all areas of the curriculum. And we really do react to staff requests. And, and Jove, no idea what it stands for. Um, Jove is an American science videos database. And we spent quite a lot of money on that recently. Um, Member staff came to us and asked us about it. We had a look, we had a free trial, we got feedback, we got feedback from the library staff, we got feedback from academic staff, and um, and we were lucky enough to to be able to to kind of go for that. And I think that your you know your first um, your first kind of thought is okay, so this is going to go for the, this is going to suit the science department, but actually in using it, health and social care, sports, there's many departments. I feel bad for now charging science for half of it. Um, maybe go, well, maybe spread that cost out a wee bit more with all the teams next year. Is this something we would have been doing before COVID? Probably. Is this something we're now really focused on to support hybrid teaching? Absolutely. Communication probably should have come before stock, but it's just the way the slides landed out of my brain. Um, communication is obviously the most important thing. You know, when I had my interview for college, I literally just talked about communication and relationships for the whole time. It is the most important thing, as you know, and communicating with, with departmental teams is really the, the key to be able to support teaching and learning and I think that I always tell them you know the library budget isn't for the library the library budget's for you and and you can see them go all right I see you know I think I think academic staff think you're bothering they're bothering you by asking you for something or bothering you by asking if you can pay for it and it's just kind of communicating that it was exactly the same when I worked in the schools. The most important thing was getting in front of the teaching members of staff to ask them what they wanted to ask how you work together. And I think that Teams, Microsoft Teams has really, really changed that. It's really enabled. I was in a sports team meeting the other day, half of us were home, half of us were on campus. You know, it just works really well just to be able to dip out in and out of meetings so easy. Um, and, and it opens up that one-to-one, -one, you know, that, that ability. Somebody doesn't need to find your office. Somebody doesn't need to pick up the phone. They send you a message. Yeah, I'm free for a chat. You know, it's really changed things in terms of communication so much. And to be able to support, even if it's a, I can't open this ebook, it's always a, I can't open this ebook, <laughs> Or I can't find this ebook is normally the question. And it's just so fantastic just to be able to have that direct line of communication. Would we have been doing this before COVID? Maybe. 
However, there still would have been a lot more walking around college to see somebody, picking up a telephone to see somebody. In the library team, we certainly weren't using Teams to the extent that we are now. Just go and look at the chat. I don't know if you can see the chat when I'm in. Uh, yes, breaking down the geographical boundaries, absolutely. So we've got campuses in Fraserburgh, which is an hour's drive. We've got campuses, we've got our um, Scottish Maritime Academy in Peterhead. You know, these are not easy places to access, um, you know, when you're on campus in Aberdeen. So we've created a staff e-newsletter. I have uh, popped at the end of the slides, I've got all the links to a lot of these things. We're creating a staff e-newsletter using Wakelet, thank you Joy, um, to go out to all the teaching staff. Was in, um, basically, we're just going to kind of add to it every term. We're going to take out, we're going to have the basics being the same, and then we're going to add in new, you know, new ebooks, new resources. And that leads us on to something we're really, really looking forward to to start to produce, which is subject weeklets. Um, I'm just waiting on the, the PE department getting back to me with with, with their their sub their topics that they teach, and we'll populate a weeklet with ebooks, with journals, with databases, with websites, um, with resources that they can can use. Again, I, you know, I'm not speaking about anything <laughs> anything revolutionary. Jay Pure loves uh, Joy Pure loves a weeklet, and it's such a as well are saying it's such a great tool it's so easy to use if you've not had to look at wakelet follow joy on wakelet she's a queen um and there are some links of the things that we've done on it as well and um, this is nothing revolutionary at all but it's just thinking well you know how can we improve communication especially with being new so subject wakelets they're going to be pretty high maintenance i think we're just going to kind of we're not going to try and do them all at once. We're not going to try. We're just going to kind of pick pet departments and work with them to create them, see if they find them useful. Um, I've also done a, a wakelet, which I've got in the chat for online uh, teaching and learning ebooks that we bought for staff. So um, again, just, just communication and constantly just promoting the services in, in, on many different platforms. I run um, copyright training as part of the induction training and, and we don't have a CLA license here at NESCO. So we're very, um, a, we make sure, we ensure we're very uh, strict on um, the fact that everybody gets sort of face-to-face -face copyright training with myself and it works really well and the feedback's really good. And only one person's falling asleep in my copyright training before, but it was after lunch. And I think maybe they just had a big lunch. I didn't take it personally. Um, so we're looking at rolling out that format of the, the CPD session. So between October and Christmas, we're gonna be delivering these online sessions for staff to come into. Um, and again, being online, you know, we're not gonna get everybody in the classroom. We're just not gonna do it. It means that we can have staff from um, all our different campuses coming together, building relationships, himself and also sharing the information and as it says on the slide how to use online resources how to use ebooks creating reading lists copyright and referencing for anybody who wants a wee reminder <laughs> so that's really how we're supporting hybrid teaching as i say it's about communication it's about stock i originally had our on online and in-class library support in, in in supporting hybrid teaching but actually I realised when I was writing it down and that it was actually supporting hybrid learning. So thinking about the students. We run um, library sessions, as I'm sure all, all of you do that work in, um, in academic libraries. And the main three that we run is how to use the library's online resources, referencing and top tips for research. And they're all differentiated to curriculum area and level. Um, I did acting and performance for the first time last week. I'd never really looked at their resources before because I'd never delivered their classes. That's terrible, it makes me sound terrible, but remember I'm new. And um, so being able to go in there and share with them, they have absolutely fantastic resources um, and to be able to share them with them. We've had 89 classes booked in before October. I don't know if that's a lot, However, I think when you say that we have myself who's full time, Christine who's full time, and then we've got two part time librarians, I think that's maybe when you're seeing it's quite a lot. We're kind of averaging, well, I'm certainly averaging about three classes a day. Um, so it is quite a lot, but the impact that it makes is unbelievable. I got a, um, an email at the end of last year from a, a lecturer who just told me that they'd 
this, the, her students had to write about um, in the collection had to write about a problem and how they overcame it and every single one of them wrote about finding information and that the library session um, fixed that problem for them and it was just the most beautiful email it was amazing um, I've never actually worked anywhere where people sent you messages to say thank you so it's taken a wee bit to get, to, get used to to be honest um, as you can see from the percentages we're delivering 77% online still and 23 in class. It's been very difficult for me to get used to the in-class sessions because I only delivered four before COVID and I delivered about 60 last year. So I don't actually know how to deliver my sessions that well in person. Um, so do we try and schedule, I've got a question, do we try and schedule all the library sessions in the induction or do they run all year? They run all year. We, we, um, We've had a much faster start this year. Last year, it you know, from week two, we were delivering three a day. Um, whereas last year, it was much later in the year as people got to grips with how they were teaching online. This year, I think it's just been bang and we've been right into them. Um, as I say, I'm finding it difficult to do the in-class ones. I think that when you're teaching online, you imagine, because they never put their cameras on, you imagine like they're so engaged and they're like, wow, that's amazing, interesting. In reality, they're all like, when I saw them in person, I was like, oh yeah, like this is what you look like. You know, the, <laughs> it's a hard sell. It's libraries, it's referencing, it's eBooks. Like it's not the most exciting thing in the world. But I think that we do get really good feedback, to be honest, and I've kind of talked about that. But yeah, if, when anybody ever wants a class, they just get it as and when they want it. But really, we've had a huge uptake for the start of the year. I'm sure much bigger colleges are doing many more lessons, but I'm also sure that many more colleges don't only have four librarians. <laughs> Asking question. How long does the library session last? Oh, with me, they're an hour. What a joy. So I um, I will not give a referencing lesson without giving uh, using the library resources first. Because when I'm giving a le referencing lesson, I refer back to the library pages and how they've referenced an ebook, online journal, etc. If they haven't had the online resources session first, it, they will be lost. So I kind of uh, double up the number of sessions that I do <laughs> by insisting they get the best experience. You know, I think it's important to say, to explain why, you know, um, and I, each of those is an hour, unfortunately. Last week, acting and performance, one, two and one in person. The poor students, they were, oh, I, I gave them a break, obviously, in between, but it really was too much. So I would separate them. Yeah, well, they're saying it's interesting that my experience in person has been online. Absolutely, because, um, and my, my colleague, Christine, the other full-time librarian, she started in April, so she'd never delivered in person till till last, um, till kind of this year either. So it's been... It's been quite interesting. Um, the Yes, the copyright for staff is mandatory. Every member of staff has had in-person copyright training with myself. So either in person on campus, pre-COVID or in person online with me as well. And we've got recordings and um, there's, <laughs> what's the difference between online and person? I've not worked out how to make them that different yet, to be honest. Um, I do things like we have a quiz at the end of referencing to cite or not to sight, okay? It's very exciting. And if they're in person, I make them like stand up. Whereas if they're online, they just say yes or no in the chat. Half of them are probably watching this morning at the same time, you know. Um, I need to, that's something I absolutely need to figure out how to make them more interactive and engaging. And we get good feedback, but I just think there's, you know, we'll never be satisfied with, um, <laughs> with how they are. So in terms of feedback, we, we feedback every, we've got um, a, a questionnaire and I've got the link to that as well. 100% of people who filled out the feedback form said they're more confident with referencing. Can't really, I was like, you can't really improve on that, but I will always try to continue to make them better. And 96% feel more confident about using online resources and we get loads of qualitative data as well. So all the information, was, oh, I'm not going to read it out. Um, but they, they are really good. It is very good feedback.
Um, yeah, we could join. Absolutely, use Kahoot or that other one, Mentimeter or something. Absolutely. I think I was just so surprised at how quick the <laughs> the, the requests were this year. It was literally like week one, bang, booking, 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 booking. And I think that that's definitely something um, we're going to look at is how to how to make them how to make them more interactive um, and just slightly more interesting. Definitely, when we we have time to breathe. Absolutely. So that is the main way that we support teaching and learning is, is, is to support learning is in the classes. But of course, last year, well, last year, for example, we delivered online library sessions to 1,600 students. We have got about 6,000 full time students. So what about the rest? We have um, we had library content in the Keep Warm um, programme, which was emails back and forth to students who had, were, um, who had acceptances during the summer. And of course, uh, induction content, videos, live Q&As, um, introduction to staff videos, kind of more induction videos. We do one-to-one -one support on teams, especially if the relationship has been built from the class. Any student that sits in front of me, and you will all be getting to know that I'm an utter blether, um, and not at all kind of scary librarian at all and I think that by having those relationships and, and, and engaging students engaging with me they see that they can just call for a you know they can just message or they can just call for a question we're also rolling out a student e-newsletter on Wakelet and again like the staff we're going to be offering these drop-in sessions because it basically the bottom line is if a tutor does not invite us into their class how do they get the same information that those that do well we're going to be having these online um online sessions we also um have got increased cop uh, video content on, on our vle is this something that would happen without covid possibly but pro possibly not to the extent that it has in terms of the basics i think probably we would have had some supplementary things of video content but we literally have a version of the each session online so again if their tutor just doesn't happen to invite us into a class they're still able to access the information um <laughs> yes no i am so noisy um we've got a student copyright guide that's coming out on weekly as well um i think that we, we don't have responsibility for the students as a copyright that's on them and um, but it is important that they understand it and i thought that we, we had like the most dull copyright guide for students and honestly it's about eight pages long on a pdf nobody is going to read that it's ter it was terrible no offense to my predecessors it, it was terrible so we've created it into a weekly and the link um i've got the link for you to see as well and social media you know what our social media isn't great um but we are trying really hard when i first started the facebook page had 39 likes and it was so bad i thought it was fake so we've come a long way from there um, and we do try and engage but they won't give us an instagram till we make our facebook and twitter better so we're kind of logging a slightly dead horse in terms of engaging with our students most people that like our posts are like our staff and my mum so um, please give us a like on facebook we also do some partnership working to try and engage with students and um, with the student advice and support team. They run a, ran a series of uh, workshops called Hack Your Studies and the library sessions were delivered within those. We've also developed an academic uh, unit, a uh, library unit. Um, or I don't know if other people call it academic tutor time. It's basically your guidance, your guidance spaces, your guidance sessions within the timetable. I'm not sure what other colleges call it. Um, and I've developed a uh, um, wakelet <laughs> with uh, library content as well so really basically what we're saying is that every single student has got an academic tutor time slot and if their tutor is presenting with them with the library unit for this to work through themselves they are going to get the same experience or not the same experience but the same information as those who invite us into their class we're basically going, OK, we've gone into 89 classes before October, but what about the other 450 classes that we're not? How do we bridge those gaps? How do we fill those gaps and meet the needs? Oh, bye, Angela. Sorry. Have a good weekend. I've, I've, I've probably talked over. OK, the last thing I'm going to speak about is supporting well-being. Um, although it wasn't kind of in my title, I think it's really important. Recreational reads. We went to Waterstones at the end of um, at the end of term, and we 
we blew four grand on recreational on books. So we bought fiction, we bought crime, we bought travel, we bought photography, we bought um, beauty books, we bought just stuff that people might want to read because I'm very passionate about transitions and I'm very passionate about that you need to teach somebody how to use a library. Before. Nobody's going to be like, if they've never been before, I'm going to go to the public library today. They need to have a relationship with libraries. And that comes from birth. I, I've worked, you know, through from from them. Um, from preschools to, to primary school libraries, links with their public libraries there. If you've got a good secondary school library, please have a good secondary school library. That eases your then transition into your college library. And then if you use your college library, that eases your transition into your public library. Uh, lifelong learners, lifelong public library and library users. And if we can get books in that, that not just for um, academic studies, um, but hopefully will reinvigorate people's love for reading for pleasure. So, and we are going to continue to add to that stock if it's successful. And we've got a, a really nice promotional campaign. Um, we've got a staff reading group that's very successful. Again, I'd like more people to come, but it's online, an online staff reading group that we started at the end of last year. We were lucky enough to get um, some Scottish Library and Information funded, uh, funding for a project that I called um, Stories, Crafts and Creative Adventures. Once a month, it's 10 staff and 10, 10 students. Um, they had to sign up for it. And once a month, we have an online session and it could be a reading group session, an author talk, a craft. What did last night? It was creative writing. A session and next month we've got um, two marathon swimmers coming to talk to us about their adventures so it's a big range of things it's for health and well-being to bring people together to build relationships across campus and just to have a good time I am all about having a good time and it's just to have a good time um, we have um, our wonderful Oh, what does the staff reading group do? It's literally like a book group. There's absolutely no emphasis on academic and there's absolutely no emphasis on like being made to, I know it sounds really random, but being made to read. What we decided to do rather than all reading the same books is that we'd have genre based. So we, and then, um, so we all read a crime book or we all read a sci-fi book or we all read a local, a, like a local interest book or we all read a kid's book. Um, and then we come together, we discuss them. There's always a quiz on the genre, uh, Nordic Noir, for example. We've had some speakers in, we've had our, the chair of the Kate, Silip Kate Greenaway and Carnegie Medals in to talk about the importance of reading with children and picture books. We've had um, Charity Norman, who's an author in to speak. Um, she was free, Twitter, power of Twitter, it was brilliant. Um, so yeah, so we, we basically just meet once a month and we've discussed what we're gonna read. You know, we've chosen our genre, our theme, and we all come together, chat about the books, and then we email out the rest of the group. So even if you've not been able to come, you're getting a, a list of good recommendations. Um, it's very laid back, as I'm sure you can imagine. And um, we're, we, I will have to start to think about now, how we, do we bring this on campus? How we bring it on campus? We've got people from Fraserburgh, we've got people from Aberdeen. How, do we leave it online? Do we add another one? You know, plenty more information if you want to know about the Slick project or, well, anything, of course, please just, just ask me. Um, so yeah, it's really good fun, it's so laid back. So we do a four o'clock session and a seven, seven o'clock session, I think, Working in public libraries for 20 years, I'm very, um, or 18 years, I'm very used to working at nights. So it's not, you know, I don't mind at all. Um, we do some partnership working again with the Student Advice Centre. They run a virtual cafe, which is a kind of fun get together time for the students on different themes. And we'll be doing um, books versus films discussion and, and quiz. I love a quiz. And uh, um, a short story session and discussion there. We're also looking at the library as a venue in partnership with the Students Association. At night and on a Saturday, our libraries are quiet. I'm not going to pretend they're, they're busy because they're not. So how can we use that space? Dungeons and Dragons Club on a Saturday morning. Can we use it for a Domino's Club? Can we use it for a colouring club? Can we use it for, um, as long as it's not like violent, you know, really, I'm, I'm open to suggestions. And again, for us looking at um, future initiatives, in-person groups, how do we extend the slick project without their funding? You know, every time we have a speaker, it's 200 quid. Like we can't sustain that, okay, over the long term without the funding from slick. So how are we going to bring what we do online on campus? Are we 
going to bring it online on campus? Are we going to do it now? Are we going to wait? And something slightly more academic that I realised that loads of people had been doing and um, we hadn't was scan and deliver. So, um, of course, using within the exceptions to copyright law, a um, fair amount for illustration for instruction or research and private study, creating copies of uh, books that we don't have digitally and scanning them out to students and staff. So that is something we're going to look at as well. Um, I do have a list of some of the things I've been talking about. So my wakelet, um, which is going to look similar to the, the staff subject wakelet, copyright guide, library unit, short videos that we've made, um, and just an example of the feedback form. But I'm going to stop talking now. Um, I'm just going to ask for questions. I will send the presentation to you, I presume, so you can and have these links. So, Jill, you, you have timed it well, because we're just coming yeah. to the end of our 30 minutes for our, our recorded session. Um, if, if you're able to, to share the slides, I'm absolutely happy to put a link uh, next to the recording as well, so people yeah. can access that. We, I was going to say we have time for one more question, but or or one question, but you you did deal with a lot of questions during the the presentation. We will continue the discussion um, just for a little while longer. Um, but for the purposes of the recording, I'm afraid for everyone in YouTube land, I'm afraid that's the end of the time that we have. So um, thank you so much, Jill, for 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 your your great presentation. We all now want to join your book club. Um, <laughs> I, I certainly do. <laughs> but until our next virtual bridge session, unfortunately, that's all we have time for. So. Thank Thank you so much for everyone joining us and until the next time as always stay safe